All right, so this is the Google Pixel 6a. It's Google's new smartphone and I've had it with me for quite some time now and as a mid-range Android device, it gets a lot of things right. On the other hand, I do think that no single device is really perfect. So for this video, I just want to share my user experience with the Google Pixel 6a. Hey, what is going on YouTube? Mike here from Team TeamBRY and yeah, let's get started. Now the Pixel 6a is technically Google's fourth A-series device, building on the foundation that they began with the Pixel 3a that debuted back in 2019. It definitely has a set of strengths that make it stand out from the rest of the competition. Although being an affordable smartphone, it does come with some factors that should be taken into consideration. Now we actually have an unboxing video of this phone as well as a quick camera test here on the channel. So if you want to check those out, I will drop some links in the description below. With that said, let's get to the video. Let's start with what I think is the best quality of the Pixel 6a, which is the camera. Google has always had a knack for getting amazing photo quality with the camera hardware on its Pixel phones, even the ones with low megapixel accounts. With that being said, the Pixel 6a is no exception to this, and I've had a great time using the phone to take photos. Computational photography is definitely something that gives this phone an edge over other devices in its price range, and you can see this in some of the photo samples that we have on here. The Pixel 6a manages to capture great shots with the pair of 12 megapixel sensors on the back. I do like how the phone handles color, contrast, dynamic range, and detail. It's a solid camera phone for sure and is great for point and shoot photography. Even the front camera doesn't fall behind, despite the fact that it only comes with a low resolution. It does have a few weaknesses though. For one, while nighttime photos are solid overall, there is a definite lack of detail and sharpness sometimes, especially when compared to nighttime photos on the Pixel 6 for example. Video quality is good, although it is obvious that the limitations on the 6a do affect the overall video quality. Video stabilization is excellent though and it's something that I've appreciated on this phone. Moving on, let's talk about the Tensor chip. It's obvious that the phone's limited 6 gigs of RAM plays a part in how it handles app restarts and such, but I think that in general, it's still a relatively fast and zippy phone thanks to the Google Tensor chip inside. We have to remember that this is the same chip found in the more expensive Pixel 6 phones and it retains its impressive performance even in this lower end device. As a quick test, I fired up XCOM 2 collection on my phone, which is a pretty demanding console to mobile game port. But despite the heavy graphics and tons of on-screen elements, the phone managed to run the game without much trouble and with zero freezes. It does get warm after a while of running games, as obviously it's not designed primarily for gaming. If you're planning on buying this phone for even simpler and more moderate tasks like messaging and occasional internet use, then the phone will have no trouble breezing through the most simple of apps and functions. Battery life has been good as well. I can easily get a day's worth of use, although I think that a low refresh rate on the small 6.1 inch display does help a lot. Of course, if you're going to be gaming on the 6a, you can expect the battery to drain a bit faster. It does take a while to charge, which pales in comparison to the fast charging tech found in a lot of newer smartphones nowadays. Alright, so before we go any further, we have a ton more smartphone and tech videos here on Team Beer Y, so feel free to hit that subscribe button and check out our other stuff if you like this one. With that out of the way, let's move on with the video. In general, Android 12 ran pretty stable for the most part. The phone did get a couple of software updates, however, my device still remains stuck with the June 2022 update, which is kind of a downer. I did run into some other software hiccups as well. One of the first issues I faced was that the phone kept giving me an error when trying to access the assistant voice typing feature. After several attempts trying to reinstall and clear storage for the assistant, Google and Gboard apps, as well as a full factory reset, I was able to make assistant voice tapping work by switching all the language settings in my phone to United States English, despite my Pixel 6a being a UK retail unit. Another issue I had was the fingerprint scanner. There have been several reports that the scanner allowed access for unregistered fingerprints, and while I did not run into this issue on my first couple of days with the phone, it eventually happened when I tried unlocking my phone with an unregistered finger. So far though, deleting my fingerprints and adding new ones seems to have worked for me. Other than these issues though, everything else in my phone has worked without a hitch. Now last but not the least in this video, let's talk about build quality. Overall, I think that the Pixel 6a is a very solid smartphone, especially with the metal sides, which do add a sense of sturdiness to the device. With that said, however, Google has unfortunately settled for a glossy plastic back on the phone, and unlike the Gorilla Glass panel on the back of the Pixel 6 and the 6 Pro, it is a bit more scratch prone. I used my phone for a few days without any cases, and my Pixel did develop a few micro scratches on the back panel. 
Thankfully, they are not very obvious, but I'd still recommend using a case on the phone, like the Spigen Tough Armor case, which Spigen were kind of the same. It's got double layer protection, internal foam padding, as well as a kickstand at the back to prop up your phone when watching videos. It's a very protective case, and I'm going to leave some links below if you guys want to grab this case for your Pixel 6a. Alright, so after all this, I can say that while it's not a perfect one, my user experience with the Pixel 6a so far has been good. It's an Android phone with good battery life, a great camera, and a formidable chipset. While it does have its own share of weak points, I do think that overall, it is worth trying out and users upgrading from a cheaper Android phone should definitely give this one a shot. On the other hand, if you're used to owning more premium smartphones like S22 Ultras and Pixel 6 Pros, then you might find that the Pixel 6a doesn't suit your needs as far as flagship smartphones are concerned. Otherwise though, if you want to try and see what Google is capable of offering when it comes to budget handsets, then by all means, feel free to try out this phone. Now guys, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to drop some links down below if you want to grab the Pixel 6a or if you want to see our other Google Pixel videos here on the channel. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.